Hello, and thank you for joining this pre-recorded webinar today. My name is Katrina Meyer, and I work with the Minnesota Stroke Association and Minnesota Brain Injury Alliance, two nonprofits that operate together as sister organizations to support individuals throughout Minnesota that have been affected by brain injury and stroke. Today, we are taking a closer look at how to connect patients with stroke to the Community Support Program Resource Facilitation. So as a quick review, the Resource Facilitation Program is a free statewide phone support program that originates from evidence-based research and provides two years of proactive support calls. We use a patient-directed support method and are not medical professionals, so we are not going to be doing any diagnosing or prescribing. And what we are is a consistent contact person for an individual throughout their recovery process. As we look at the resource facilitation model, it is a pretty simple model. After an individual has sustained their stroke, at any point in time, they can be signed up for the resource facilitation program. Once an individual is signed up for the program, we mail them a packet of information at the four-week mark and then do our first check-in call with them at the six-week mark. Now, since this is a patient-directed program, uh, that time frame can be modified depending on the case's needs and can be noted on the referral form, and I will make sure to note that as we are going through the specific process for referrals. So once that initial support call happens, we are doing an ongoing cyclical checking in on supports, providing supports, seeing how um, things went with what we provided, and then starting again with the scheduled support check-in calls. And we support people with a variety of things as they are going through this program. A lot of it ends up being things like support programs uh, for support groups and uh, navigating some of those complicated uh, healthcare and government systems, uh, but really a very wide variety of elements. And if you'd like to learn more about what types of supports uh, we support individuals in and um, how the program works, please visit the MDH uh, Stroke Program YouTube playlist and uh, find the February 2022 recording that has information specifically on the Resource Facilitation Program. All right, so let's dive into getting this referral process started. The first step is to very simply just share information about the Resource Facilitation Program. And that can be done with assistance through some handout flyers, brochures that are available for free through our organization. Some of those are included as attachments in the email that is distributing this webinar, or if you are accessing this specifically through YouTube playlist, uh, you can contact me directly and I can get those flyers and brochures to you. Um, they work as great talking points with patients. A few uh, points that are helpful for you to keep in mind as the professional while you are talking about this program with individuals is uh, a few things like what the program is. It's a proactive check-in program that helps connect patients to resources, navigating systems, and receiving support information on the recovery process. It's important to remember that this program is optional and that it's not medical care, and also that an individual doesn't have to have a specific need or issue on the front end to access this program. They don't have to know how they're going to utilize the program. And Honestly, there are some cases where they, maybe they won't need to access the program for support, but they will have a friendly person that is checking in on them, asking how their recovery is going, and sometimes that is just as big as any resource that an individual receives. Um, but many things for people in their stroke recovery process don't surface until maybe six months in or a year and a half in. And so that's why 
we like to make note that an individual doesn't need to know how they're going to use the program right away. And also with that, it's important to know that an individual can discontinue with the program at any point in time. Um, and that it is really helpful if the care team um, is able to give some sort of recommendation on saying, we support this program, we think that it's helpful for individuals, that is a completely optional element in sharing about the RF program, but is something that we do encourage if that is something you feel comfortable doing. Second step is figuring out how you would like to submit the referral. There are two primary ways, the hard copy and electronic copy. The hard copy can be submitted through fax or through scanning and emailing. And again, that uh, form can be obtained through contacting me directly, or it also is attached in the email that is being sent out with this webinar. Then the electronic copy is very simple to access, uh, can just be clicked on for this link here, and I will also do show you how you can access the electronic portal through the website later on. So specifically looking at the hard copy referral form here, it's a pretty simple form, and there are four basic parts that I have highlighted here. And the first part is just an authorization saying, I understand that this program is going to contact me and I'm okay with that. I understand what this program is. Then this green box is probably the most important box in this referral form. It is the contact information for the individual who has had the stroke. Um, this information all helps us have the most successful and impactful first interaction with the individual. And the purple box, that is the information for uh, the caregiver or primary support person uh, that may or may not be applicable for all cases. Um, so it's not necessarily going to be filled out every time. And then at the very bottom is that orange highlighted area where that is the information that you put in about yourself so that we can know where referrals are coming from and make sure that we are providing support to the people who are connecting individuals to the program. Uh, a few other things just to note on here, if an individual is not able to sign the form for any reason, they can give verbal authorization or uh, just draw an X um, if there's limitations with mobility. Um, we just want to make sure that there is that consent element in there. Uh, and then also in the green box, we just want to make sure to, I, I just want to clarify that the date of incident and uh, hospital discharge, those can be approximate dates. Really what we want to know from that information is how long have they been in the hospital um, and when are they going to be out of the hospital so that we're contacting them at the appropriate time. Um, and that line for the date of hospital discharge, that is a great area to just make that additional note in there about if an individual would like to be contacted before that six week mark. And then in the element for cause, uh, you can be pretty generic in that we don't need uh, anything too medical, but if there are some specific coexisting things that are important to note, uh, such as the stroke happened postpartum or uh, in connection with a surgery for another health condition, uh, those can be helpful things for us to know. All right, so now we're going to look at the web portal, which is pretty simple to access. You start by going to the Brain Injury Alliance's website, braininjurymn.org. And then on the top, there is a toolbar where you click on resource facilitation. And then that will bring you to this page um, that has information about the resource facilitation program. But then you access the portal through clicking on the blue hyperlink that says click here to access resource facilitation. And that will bring up a new page for you that is the portal for making the referral. An easier way that a lot of people like to utilize is 
uh, saving uh, the link for the portal to uh, your browser and you are able to get a fresh version of the referral form in the portal every time you click on that link. So looking at the link specifically, um, the information is all the same that is being asked in the hard copy. It's just laid out slightly differently. Starts off with the contact information for the individual. Uh, the main thing that's different here is that you have a drop down menu that asks how soon you'd like to be contacted by the resource facilitator and then a drop down menu is available that gives you some different time frame options. The caregiver information, all the same. Uh, there's a few extra columns that are there, but that just is um, if more information is available, but may not necessarily be applicable. Then as you continue to scroll down, there is the caregiver information again, and that is specifically stating for you as the professional that is helping the individual get connected. There is a comments box where you can put in any additional helpful information, such as um, the patient's phone number is their brother's phone, and so uh, a different person will be answering the phone, or the individual is heavily aphasic and uh, needs caregiver support in communicating. Any of those things that might be helpful in making sure that we have that successful first interaction with an individual. And then at the very bottom, I highlighted in red that, again, authorization for consent um, that would happen verbally in this situation, that the patient verbally has given their consent, and um, this is you confirming that that happened. And there's a, just the submit button at the very bottom of the page. You click that, and that sends all this information securely to our administration team who takes it from there, and uh, you will get a notification on your page that the information has been submitted. So that is the basics of the resource facilitation program and how to get people connected. Please feel free to contact me directly if you would like any more information about the referral process or programs that we offer. Thank you.